Hello, welcome to Light of Life broadcast. I'm so blessed and glad to invite you to our program tonight. We are believing God, you will be blessed. Life Church International, right from the city of Nairobi. We bring you messages every week through this television station. And I want you to sit back and receive God's word and your life will never be the same again. I believe as we evangelize and as we disciple, as we equip the saints uh, for the work of the ministry and commission them to their ministerial functions, you too will be empowered to rise up as a child of God, even to serve the Lord. And in case you are not born again, you're welcome too to enjoy God's word. And guess what? A miracle will take place, a miracle of salvation, or even miracles of healing and deliverance in your life. So sit back and enjoy the program tonight, and we'll pray with you at the end of the program in Jesus' name. I want to talk about divine encounters that are going to happen to you this month. Somebody said divine encounters. God is willing to come to us in a special way in this month of September to shift us to a place we need to be in this season. When you hear divine encounter, the word divine means that the spiritual experience you're going to have and a series of them is coming from God. Divinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit want to manifest himself to you in a very special way in this season. Father, I give you praise. Now, encounter is something to do with a special event, special meeting, special experience, a special move of God that will shift us to a new place. Praise God. God always works with timing. Somebody say timing. Read with me Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 as we begin sharing the word. Can we read the verse so that we start the engine? One, two, go, everybody. But when... God sent for his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Praise God. So when the fullness of time had come, this is what God did. He sent for the, his son. There is a timing in the spirit when God must do certain things. Amen. And every time God is about to do something, he sends a word. He drops it in the heart of somebody. And he also begins to prepare the individuals by faith and the Holy Spirit begins to communicate in the hearts of the people. Most of you know, if God is about to do something for you, you begin having sensations. You begin having vibrations in the spirit. You begin getting some signals. You begin feeling, this season looks like my season of marriage. I don't know, I don't have anybody, but I feel like this season, you know, those kind of signals in the spirit. Every time God wants to do something, he does it in his time, praise God. Specific time. And it's very, very important for us to be ready for divine visitations in the month of September. Angelic activities is increasing, praise God. Anything you need help this month, God is going to help you. Did you hear what I said? In Jesus' precious name. So, God is willing to come to us in a special way to shift us to a place we need to be in this season. Now, there are several purposes that I picked up in the spirit for divine encounters. Why does God always want to visit his people? Number one, to bring God's will on earth and on somebody. God's will needs to be done on the earth. And as the saints are praying and God's people are praying to him, asking for this and that, it comes to a moment he responds. You see, if you read Psalms 40, you will hear something that David said, verse 1. Go to Psalms chapter 40 and verse 1. The Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Do you see that inclining? So as people are praying, as people are seeking God, as people are praying for this and that to move, God, as it were, beds, inclines, pays attention, 
And when God moves, I tell you, the earth vibrates. When God inclines his ear, there's going to be deliverance, there's going to be help, there's going to be salvation, that there's going to be uplifting, and because he hears God, I mean, our cry. So God brings, want to bring his will on the earth, and that will on the earth should locate somebody, and because of that, he gives each one of us divine encounters. Secondly, to call man into the next assignment. Every time God has an assignment for somebody, he will move in a special way. Praise God. I pray that today, every assignment that God has for you, God will actually move in a special way so that he can bring you to that assignment. Praise God. I'm already hearing the spirit. Some of the things that have been kept on the shelf for a moment and for a time for you. Certain things God said he's going to do. But they are still in the shelf. This month, God is going to visit them and begin to bring them to manifestation in Jesus' name. There are opportunities that were meant to be yours this year. They are going to show up in September in Jesus' name. There are certain doors that were supposed to be open for you, but there has been a delay. I declare this September there is going to be a manifestation of those doors in the name of Jesus. Every time God wants to bring a man into the next assignment, he manifests in a divine way. And I declare your time of encounter is now in the name of Jesus. There is another reason why there are divine encounters. To demonstrate his power in the presence of his enemies. There are so many enemies of the gospel. There are so many enemies of the cross. There are so many enemies of your life. And God is going to give you a divine encounter to demonstrate his power among or in the midst of his enemies. The Bible say in Psalms 68 and verse 1, let God arise and all his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Let those who hate him flee from him, the Bible says. So God intends to demonstrate his power even in the midst of his enemies. Hallelujah. Fourthly, God gives us divine encounters uh, when men call upon his name. When men call upon his name, he comes with salvation and vengeance. He comes with salvation and vengeance. When the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Old Testament says, shall be delivered. Glory to God. When you call on God, something is going to happen. Hallelujah. He also comes with vengeance. He also comes to save. He also comes to hear the cry of those who are looking for justice and looking for mercy. I pray that this month will be a month when you will be visited by the Lord for him to do uh, what he must do for you. Praise God. Fifthly, God comes to establish our faith and give us a foundation in regard to our relationship with him. Divine visitations are for the purpose of God establishing people's faith and giving us a foundation for our relationship with him. Now, uh, I know I have this history that some of the people in this house, we had an encounter also. Maybe we prayed uh, for something that was troubling you, bang, and God moved in a big way. Glory to God. So that your faith can be established. Paul said that I did not come to you in First uh, Corinthians, I think chapter 2. I did not come to you with enticing words and man's words or man's wisdom. But my speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of human wisdom. But in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. God comes in the demonstration of his spirit. And the Bible says in verse 5, the reason for this demonstration is so that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I pray just in case your faith is shaking, just in case you think you are losing too much, the Lord is going to intervene this month, beginning in this service right now, so that your faith, karasuta, kapure, hey. Somebody is going to have power for speed. Power for acceleration right now. I declare to you, things are going to happen to you quickly. In a powerful way in the name of Jesus. 
because the enemy caused a delay in your life i declare when that delay is removed there is another power that is gonna take place it's called divine speed i say may things be done for you within a short time in jesus mighty name Amen. glory to god hallelujah to establish our faith amen and sixthly god gives us divine encounter in what we call at the fullness of his time god comes to supernaturally alter situations there are certain things that should be altered should be changed Sometimes you are not praying. Sometimes you are not even sowing seeds. Sometimes you are not even expecting. But because God knows the future. God knows what is coming your way. God knows what is kept in store for you. He will come and supernaturally move to alter and change things. Even at the, what we call the fullness of time. Because it is his time to do what he must do to protect your life. Look. We have the story of Jacob when he was moving, you know, running away from his brother and all that. And then one day he came to a location and he was tired and he lay himself on the stone. And then all of a sudden in a dream and he saw heaven open. He saw angels ascending and descending. Look, the man didn't expect that place to have anything. He was not sure. He didn't know that that place was a special place, a special location where God had promised his father, I mean his grandfather, you know, uh, in giving that land. And Jacob had a divine encounter because God will not allow this man to continue to be a conman, to continue to be a supplanter, to continue to go wayward, you know, wayward in his life. God will not allow Jacob and therefore God timed that Jacob will sleep in a specific place where there is a divine activity so that his life can be changed. And I pray because God knows you. He knows what he wants to do with your life. He knows your past. He knows your future. I pray that he will provide for you divine encounters. Glory to God. Events and series of things happening around you. So it can shift your heart and take it back where it's supposed to be. Because divine plan of God will still be accomplished in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. And number seven reasons for divine encounter. To demonstrate his lordship over all. To demonstrate that he is Lord. Somebody say Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there are many men and women of God who had divine encounters. And will not take care of all of them. I will just uh, use one story. But we had people like Abraham. Abraham had many visitations. Many visitations of God. Abraham had many divine encounters. A man like Isaac. Isaac had divine encounters. Even the issues of getting his wife. They could see the hand of God in his life. We have people like Jacob who wrestled with an angel. These are divine encounters. We have men like Moses who saw a bush burning and the bush was not being consumed. These are divine encounters. All the prophets, minor and major, had the word of God coming to them. And some of them, the scripture says, and he saw the word. You know, the word of the Lord that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw. Even some were seeing the word, yet you can't see the word. Instead of the Bible saying they heard the word, some portions say they saw the word. And I pray that these prophetic encounters will take place for your life in the name of Jesus. You will not only hear the word, but you will see it in your time. You will see the fulfillment of God's word. Hallelujah. You know, even Saul of Tarsus in the New Testament, he had a divine encounter on the road to Damascus. Though he was going to damage the church, God had a divine plan that this young man is not going to harass the church forever. Something happened to shift Saul of Tarsus. Later he became a great apostle. We are Peter. Peter is fishing, catching nothing. All of a sudden he has a divine encounter when the Lord says to him, Throw your nets on the other side. And there was such, such a big catch. Even when Peter was preaching in Acts 10. In Cornelius house. And he's preaching telling them. That though they are Gentiles. God had intended to reach them. And before Peter preached, finished the message. There was a move of the Holy Ghost. In that house in Acts chapter 10. 
the apostles themselves, they had divine encounters as Jesus was teaching them day in, day out, as he was taking them from place to place in Caesarea Philippi, here and there, in Cana of Galilee. There are so many divine encounters that these men saw and it changed their lives completely. Every time God wants to do something new, he comes to us in a special way. And I pray that God will come to you in this season. I declare even your dreams are going to shift this time. You're going to see dreams at a higher place, at a higher dimension. You have seen dreams of this and that, individuals involved. You will see dreams with the angels and the divinity. You will see amazing things. I declare no sorcery or witchcraft can hinder your mind or your heart to perceive what God is doing. I declare your soul and your spirit be connected with a prophetic dimension. Are you aware this is an apostolic house? This is a prophetic house. And the anointings that operate here are able to shift your life to see things in a big way. I declare by 2012, you will even see who is going to be the president. You don't have to be an apostle. You don't need to be a prophet. We are coming into a season and a time when supernatural activity is increasing in a big way. Uh, lift your hand and say, I want God to touch my life. Hallelujah. Some of us, why? Sometimes we don't see divine things because we are surrounded by so many demonic activities. There are curses. There are words spoken by enemies. There are accusation agreements. There are all kinds of demonic activities. But I tell you, you will have a grace to bypass all these strange events in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the anointing of Christ breaks the yokes. And I declare no yoke is going to hinder you from coming where you need to come. I feel an anointing over my life right now. I declare every disease in be healed in the name of Jesus. Bakara, sota, rabura. I sense God in the house. I declare anything from hell that is hanging over your mind. Anything from hell that is tagging your soul. I declare be free. Be free completely. And those of you watching, be free in the name of Jesus. I declare no satanic agenda can stop you from being who you are supposed to be. I declare fire of the Holy Ghost rest on somebody. Fire of the Spirit rest on somebody. I declare you are free from any manipulation. You are free from any harassment. I say you are free from every pain. You are free from every shame. I declare your children will not be harassed. Your children will not be visited by devils. Your children are dedicated to God. I declare every divine arrangement, every divine plan that God had for your children, let it be manifested in this season. I declare every tongue that rises against you in judgment. We condemn it in Jesus' name. And I declare in this house, there is a move of God right now. Karazato. Somebody come on this piano and manufacture some sound. Ora sura pura. Lift your hand and worship. Lift your hand and worship right now. I declare every power of the enemy that has risen against you is defeated in the name of Jesus. Every sick be healed. Every sick be healed. I command growth. Every kind of cyst, growth, disappear, dissolve in the name of Jesus. Every kind of tumor be healed in the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You are trusting God for miracle money. It's going to happen. You are trusting God for a job. It's going to happen. You are trusting God for contracts. It's going to happen. You are trusting God for an open door. It's going to happen. You are trusting God to serve him in your day. It's going to happen. The devil is a liar. Every plan that God has for your life is going to happen. Kerazura. Shatora Mazia Baha. Hallelujah. Go to Mark chapter 10. Let me show you something amazing. Verse 46. This story of blind Batman. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Batman, the son of who?
Emmaus sat by the roadside doing what begging and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out saying Jesus son of David have mercy on me so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called then they called the blind man saying to him be of good cheer rise he is calling you and throwing aside his garment he arose or he rose and came to Jesus so Jesus answered and said to him what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said to him rabboni that i may receive my sight then jesus said to him go your way your faith has made you well and immediately he received his sight and followed jesus on the road praise god mm. listen your faith has a role to play in divine encounters if you want to see god doing unusual things for your life your faith has a role to play and the bible says of this man who had a divine encounter surely this guy had a major you know a uh, move of god take place in his life he was blind after a short encounter the man can now see surely this was amazing but now we have a clue through what jesus said this is what jesus said your faith has made you well and so as i was reading this the holy spirit by wisdom began to show me what is this kind of faith that but myers demonstrated that made him well what kind of faith is this because your faith has made you well and so let me show you briefly 12 elements of faith of this batmaya's guy from this scripture and if you find yourself taking any of these 12 type of steps i'm telling you the truth you're going to have a divine encounter even when you are asleep or even when you are walking on the road or whatever wherever place you find yourself god will move in an amazing way the first thing i want you to notice is uh, this but myers guy never used to sleep in this place he must have been going home and then coming to position himself so the first element of but myers faith is he left home and went with hope to receive something that day he left home went with the hope that today i will receive something my god many times when you wake up in the morning i don't know what you are looking for and what your attitude and your faith but i want to encourage you this morning any time you are leaving home you should have a hope that today something supernatural is going to happen to me praise god he may not have known that he was going to meet jesus but at least he left home did you hear what i say he didn't know he was going to meet jesus but he did something that morning he left home glory to god and so when you step out any time you need to have hope praise god because faith needs hope hallelujah secondly something happened to this man he had a commotion and then he noticed or heard from the people that it was jesus of nazareth so this is an element of his faith he heard that it was jesus of nazareth who was passing that way because faith comes by hearing glory to god and hearing by the word of god and when he heard it was jesus of nazareth let me tell you jesus was a powerful man and everywhere they always kept talking in home you know at homes or in their houses uh, saying well have you heard of a man called jesus of nazareth this man is opening blind eyes this man is raising the dead this man he was in a wedding the other day and the wine ran off and we hear in the other place of cana that he he you know he he made wine they are hearing all these kind of stories they, they are here people are talking everywhere that there is this man I, I, we don't know whether he is a messiah but he the other day we hear he walked on water i tell you the truth 
What you hear is very important, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to have a divine encounter. If you're only hearing about witchcraft, you're only hearing about sorcery, you're hearing how the devil is doing this, what the enemy is doing this, the other one was bewitched, the other one was killed, and also the only kind of things you hear, you will develop fear inside of you. But this man had the right thing. That's why I bless God that this house is a house of good news. No matter what situation you're going through, we can tell you of a truth that God has need of you and he wants to move in a special way and change your story. This man heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. What do you think happened in his spirit? What do you think happened in his heart? The man must have gotten excited. And no wonder, number three, element of his faith, he began to cry out. Hallelujah. He began to shout. He began to cry out. Some people have gone through so many problems until they can no longer lift their voice. They can no longer pray. They can no longer call on the name of the Lord. But I declare this morning, we will not be silenced when we know Jesus is in town. All we want is him. Hallelujah. When we know he is here, all we want is to cry out. He began to cry out. And that was an expression of his faith. Thirdly, he directed, I mean, fourthly, he directed his cry to God's mercy. God's mercy. He didn't just say, Jesus, hi, how are you, Jesus? No. The man went straight, focused. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What does that mean? God's mercy was the substance of his faith right there. Glory to God. God's mercy. He, he directed his cry to God's mercy and that formed the substance of his faith. That's why we need to have the word of God be so filled with the knowledge of God's word so that when we are praying to God, our prayers, are, for them to be effective, are prayers full of God's word and understanding, praise God. Number five, this guy ignored the religious spirits that were telling him to be quiet. Many times when you are stretching out your faith, you want God to move for you, there are many voices that are telling you, don't do it, don't do that, uh, be quiet, this is not the time, this is not the moment, kind of God has forgotten you, the devil is a liar. This man could not be silenced. He continued to cry out even the more, glory to God. He ignored the religious spirits that are telling him to be quiet. Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for the hearing the word of God. I want to pray with you right now as we close this program in Jesus' mighty name. Believe God with me. What you have heard is going to have an impact in your life. As Father, I pray in Jesus' name for somebody who is sick, be healed in Jesus' name. I command germs to wither and die, bacteria to wither and die, all kinds of viruses to wither and die. I declare the grace of God. Come to my viewer this night in Jesus mighty name and father for the unsaved save them in the name of the Lord today and I declare Lord may your kingdom continue to advance even through the ministry of the word in Jesus mighty name I bless you and your family tonight in Jesus name and guess what this message uh, is coming every Thursday night at 10 o'clock on NBCI It's coming back as I repeat on Mondays at 6 o'clock on the same channel so you're welcome from 6 to 6 30 enjoy God's word Enjoy your night also in Jesus' name. And welcome to our services if you are in Nairobi, Kenya Cinema Plaza, the Apostolic House. We have services every day, morning glory, lunch hours, and evening services. And every Sunday morning from 9 a.m. I tell you what, God will bless you in a very special way in Jesus' name.